In this video, we're going to look at some very simple propositions and very simple proofs of those propositions. Let's start off with something that looks like x implies y implies x. Okay, how would we prove this? Well, we would assume x and y, and let's call those assumptions a and b. So A is the assumption of X, and B is the assumption of Y. And now we need to prove the claim X. And of course, we already have a proof of X. It's the assumption A. Okay. Now, it turns out that we can represent this proof as a term. We do this using lambda abstractions. So we have lambda A of type x, so a is a proof of x, lambda b, y, b is an assumed proof of y, and then the proof of x is simply a. So this term is the proof of x implies y implies x. We can also write this term in a simpler way if we leave off the types and use lambda to bind several variables at once and just write lambda a b a. This is simply shorthand for the term above. Sometimes we'll call these terms proof terms and the fact that you can represent proofs as terms in this way is known as the Curry-Howard correspondence or sometimes the curry howard de Brown correspondence. So proofs are terms. Now I did a little something unfair here in that I had these propositions x and y which weren't bound anywhere. But that's simple enough. The actual proposition would be for all x and prop, for all y and prop, x implies y implies x. And then for the proof of this, well, you also use lambdas on this x and y. And then lambdas for the assumptions. And then finally, after all the lambdas, you have the proof of the claim, which is A. So this is the proof of this proposition. Or I could say, this is the proof term for this proposition. Or this is a term which has this proposition as its type. Those are all ways of saying the same thing. Now let's move on to another example. Suppose we have propositions x, y, and z. We want to prove that x implies y, implies y implies z, implies x implies z. We don't really need these last parentheses, but let's include them here for clarity. Now, how can we prove this? We can start by assuming a, x implies y, and b, y implies z. Now, the claim we need to show would be x implies z, but we can go one step further and assume c, x. And now the claim we need to prove is z. So, how can we prove z? Well, you can think about it in two ways. One is to think we can apply this assumption b to reduce our claim to being y, then we could apply this assumption A to reduce the claim to being X, and then we have a proof of X. You can also think of it in terms of the proof term you want to build. This A is of type X implies Y, so that means A is a function from X to Y. Likewise, this B has type Y implies Z. That means B is a function from Y to Z. So, if we need something of type z, we can get it by applying b to something 
of type Y. So B applied to something of type Y gives you something of type Z. So now we just need to find something of type Y. A gives you something of type Y if you apply it to something of type X. Well, we have something of type X, namely C. So we went through the same process both times. The first time we reduced the claim from proving Z to proving Y and finally to proving X. And the second time we built a proof term by deciding which function to apply and delaying deciding which arguments to apply the function to. So now if we want a proof term for this entire implication here, it would be lambda A, lambda B, lambda C, B, A, C. And as before, we can start off by writing for all x, y, z, and prop. And then the proof term would be lambda x, y, z, all of type prop, and lambda a, lambda b, lambda c, and then b, a, c. So this would be the real proof term, the proof term for this proposition. Now let's do one more. Let's assume again we have propositions x, y, and z, and what we want to prove is that x implies y implies z, implies x implies y, implies x implies z. We'll start off by assuming an assumption A of type x implies y implies z, and B of type x implies y, and C of type X, and the claim we need to prove is Z. So the way to get Z is by applying A. That would mean we have two sub-goals. One is X and one is Y. And the way to prove X is obvious. We have it here with C. And how do we prove Y? Well, we can apply B to reduce proving y to proving x, and again we have x by c. Now what's the corresponding proof term? Well, we started off needing something of type c. That we get by applying a to two arguments. The first one which should be something of type x, which we know will be c, and the second one should be something of type y, which we get by applying B to C. So the corresponding proof term will be lambda A, B, C, A, C, B, C. Or if we close the proposition by starting it with for all X, Y, and Z, Then we have the proof term lambda x, y, z, lambda a, b, c, a, c, b, c. So this is the proof term for this proposition.